Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to another video. In this one, I'd like to talk a little bit about inhalers and specifically dry powder inhalers versus the puffers that actually generate the little puff that you inhale. So the question that I received goes like this. Why do these types of dry powder inhaler mechanisms feel so restrictive compared to HF? A's or basically the, the puffers. So there's different names for these things, but generally you have inhalers that sometimes you have to open up, activate, and then draw with a deep breath in, you draw the powder inside the airways. And then there's the ones that generate the puff when you press on them. And then you have to synchronize your breathing, trying to get that air in. But basically the question goes on to say, it feels almost like it's collapsing your bronchial tubes when trying to draw the powder in, which would limit the dispersion inside the lungs. And wouldn't there be a benefit of an air hole somewhere on the inhaler to be able to allow a deeper restriction-free draw? Now, obviously I can answer with different parts of the question, but I think the, the gist of it is why does it feel difficult to draw the air in when you're trying to, to breathe in through an inhaler? And that is actually an important point, and I think it's maybe not commented on enough. But the good thing, if there is any good news in this, is that there are so many options now for inhalers. So you can probably find one that works for you, that you are able to use correctly. So this is where you probably need to work with your doctor, your prescriber, as much as possible to try to find the right device that works for you. So there's probably an inhaler that's right for each patient. And this is something that I'm quite optimistic about because we generally can get people to, to use them correctly. And this is important because in the past people used to struggle a lot. And one of the reasons actually that the dry powder inhalers were actually produced is because it helps people inhale the powder correctly. So sometimes people do struggle a lot to synchronize their breathing with the puffer. So if you're using, for instance, a Ventolin inhaler, where you're basically pressing on, on the inhaler and it releases a puff, you need to really try to synchronize your breathing in with your pressing on the inhaler, which can sometimes prove difficult, especially maybe your, your hands are not operating as well as they should, or maybe you're really unwell and you're struggling to, to synchronize your breathing, you're really breathless, you're, tr you're breathing really quickly and trying to do that maneuver where you have to hold your breath slightly before you breathe in, that can be difficult because the difference is, the main difference between dry powder inhalers and puffers, when you're in terms of inhalation technique, there are maybe different subtle nuances between the different devices, but the, the gist of it is that with dry powder inhalers, you activate the inhaler, whatever you need to do to activate it, deep breath out, and then just put it to your mouth and take a deep breath in, hold your breath for a bit and release. And that's the administration. Whereas with the puffers, you need to deep breath out, you know, to empty your lungs. And then as you're starting to breathe in, you put the inhaler to your mouth and press on it to try to slowly draw in that puff of particles that's being produced. So that can sometimes be a little bit more, more difficult for some people. Now, different people prefer different types of inhalers. I, I've seen patients who actually prefer the puffers because maybe psychologically they feel that they're drawing the air in, they're using it correctly, they've been using them for years, they prefer those. Some people actually prefer the dry powder inhalers because they feel that it's easier for them to operate. They have fewer steps to do when they're breathing in. So it depends from person to person. Now, there is a mention in the comment about an air holding in the inhaler to make it easier to breathe in. Now, all the dry powder inhalers, they have an air hole. So basically, you are it's not a vacuum in there and you're just trying to move the powder. It has an air hole on the side of an inhaler, on the top, next to the mouthpiece. Somewhere there is a little bit of a hole that allows you to draw air in and then it goes through the inhaler, collects some of the powder, the little dust in there that you're trying to breathe in deeper than the lungs. But they are designed in such a way as to they're actually quite quite smart little devices because they're designed in such a way so that the flow rate that you're getting through the inhaler is optimum so that it mobilizes the particles to reach deep within the lungs. So there's quite a lot of engineering involved in these inhalers in designing them. So so it's it's not because they've purposefully wanted to make it difficult for patients to administer them and it feels a little bit blocked when you're trying to breathe in it's because they're trying to get the optimal flow rate now with dry powder inhalers there is indeed the little caveat that some patients are unable to generate enough force enough inspiratory force to draw the air in powerfully enough to move the powder and there are some devices that sometimes you can we can use they're mostly for clinical trials though to measure how much pressure 
someone can uh, can put on the inhaler. So what's the, your <laughs> vacuum power, let's say. So sometimes we can use that, and then if it's below a certain rate, then potentially using certain dry powder inhalers may be a little bit more difficult. But different in dry powder inhalers will have different inspiratory force required to use them optimally. So then again, this brings the question of which is the right inhaler for you in your particular situation. It's very hard to make a blanket recommendation and I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to give you specific medical advice for your case, just trying to make you uh, aware of the differences that exist between the different devices that we have out there. So basically there is an air hole. Now let's go back to the question. There is an air hole that allows you to, to draw the air in, mobilize the powder and breathe it into your lungs at an optimum flow rate that allows the air to penetrate deeper than the lungs. The main thing with dry powder inhalers, as I was saying before, is that you use them correctly as directed. So you breathe out, activate. You, well, first of all, you activate the inhaler as you need to, as according to the instructions. You breathe out and then you try to breathe in as forcefully as you can. I think it's better to go harder on that inhalation from a direct powder inhaler, even if it feels a little bit restrictive, because you will generate the optimum flow rate. So with dry powder inhalers, if you're inhaling too slowly, you won't mobilize the powder. You need to have sufficient force to bring it up. So that's why some people, especially with very advanced disease, sometimes cannot manage very well on the dry powder inhaler. I would say they're very good for people with early, moderate, and maybe very experienced patients who, who have lung disease. So I think early stages, moderate stages of lung disease, chronic lung disease probably will manage very well on dry powder inhalers. I think they're a little bit easier. You have fewer steps. If you have really, really advanced, really bad disease, or if you are struggling to synchronize your breathing with breathing in, um, that's when you kind of like need to try and think about some other type of inhaler. You're moving more towards the, the, the puffers, maybe using those with a spacer, maybe considering nebulized medication. So there's quite a lot of things, a lot of nuances that differ, like I said, from patient to patient. But, but basically, this is why sometimes, uh, so going back to the question, why do dry powder inhalers feel so restrictive? It's because they're trying to optimize the flow. So they're trying to slow it down a little bit, even if you breathe in really forcefully, just to make sure that the powder is mobilizing at the optimal flow rate. But also, you need to have enough power to mobilize it. So that's why it's kind of a, the device is trying to control that flow. That's why it feels restrictive because it's trying to control how quickly you're getting the powder in so it goes really deep. But the main thing you can do, breathe out, fully before you try to take the inhaler and then breathe in forcefully. You might feel a little bit of restriction, but that's just the inhaler device trying to optimize how quickly the powder goes in so that it settles in the right place at the right depth within the airways. And then as you've completed your breath at the end of it, just hold your breath for a bit and then slowly release. But that's the thing about dry powder inhalers. With the other ones, the MDIs, the meter dose inhalers, the ones that have a propellant inside that when you press releases a, a plume of particles, those are the ones where you need to breathe in slowly while synchronizing your breathing with the release of the medication. So you're basically breathing out and as you're starting to breathe in at just that right time, you press on the inhaler and slowly inhale that little plume and you hold your breath at the top then release. Okay, so so this is kind of a little bit of a all over the place explanation of how we use inhalers, but I thought I, it was a good question that I think is not often clarified enough. Hope it was helpful, and if you have further questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'm trying to make as many video of these videos as I can. All the best and good health.